What's going on everybody? So it is Sunday, a little bit in the afternoon here. Finally got some time to sit down and do my review. So, uh, not too much to talk about, I guess. I uh, just took a week off, coming back into things here. I uh, didn't, didn't trade on Monday. Uh, I think we ended up getting home super, super late, so wasn't feeling like trading that next morning. So skip that day, but uh, the rest of the days were pretty good here. Um, three green days and then Friday I kind of gave back a little bit. But I mean, the three green days is really what I'm most excited about here. So uh, really only took six trades the first three days that I was back. I mean, each all of them were winners. And then uh, Friday is where I started catching the uh, losing trades in a little bit more there. But I know I definitely took some good trades here. I think I was only risking I was about half size risk here on this day. So obviously the winners aren't going to be as big, but next couple days made up for it. Uh, I ended up catching a good trade on Friday. Um, I mean, really, these trades, there's not going to be too much to see, but uh, going back over these again for maybe the third time, fourth time for me, maybe we'll catch something different. Uh, if not, then whatever, we'll see what happens. But uh, P&L curve looking a little bit better here. I mean, obviously seeing these big green days all of a sudden, really, I mean, just shooting straight up. Obviously, it's going to help out a lot, but I uh, made 423 on the week, uh, 8 for 14, average was about 113. It should be a little bit, well, I can't say it should be, but uh, obviously with the half risk the first day, and then the um, $11 winner there just kind of throws things off a little bit, and then the average loss I think I took 1, 2, 3, 4. I took 4 full-size stop losses. I mean, the Facebook one almost kind of counts as another one, but just because I took off a partial a little bit early before I got stopped out on the rest, just kind of cut it a little bit short there. 10,000 shares traded. Dollars per share is pretty good. Um, basically 40 compared to 60 there. Uh, one day's 3. Compliance just a slightly under there. Commissions, 82 bucks. so ultimately on the week I ended up with 340 so... Really not a terrible week, uh, especially after taking a week off. You know, it always takes me a week to get back into the swing of things, so no surprises there. Uh, so really not too much else to say, because I haven't gone over these videos yet. Uh, I haven't typed up my report yet either, so... I mean, just on these weeks back, it's just it's just a matter of doing the trading and just getting back into things. So, I mean, next week, what then... 22nd come up here, I'll probably be a little bit more, have a little bit more to talk about, but this review is not going to be too much, nothing special, really, other than just watching the trades. So let's see. So Apple, first trade that I took here for an SMB View app play, and that is it. So it was long 300. Got 2R out of it, so definitely good there. Uh, I was trying to get 2.3. In at 22, trying to risk this next push here. So, uh, first bad candle, uh, but pretty strong. Came right back up above. Nine's coming up on it. View app's right here, so it's giving me a really good level to pay attention to. Spy's ultimately pretty green. Um, let's just see. So we got the one tap, and we're just looking for the second tap here to hold. And take the long off of it. So we're getting close. Need to see 18. down to 16 so it gets all the way to 13 and 12 so then at this point I'm waiting to see well for one I'm waiting to see it not go any further and then some buyers to take this thing back up so we got a buyer there so we step up pretty quick there so I click the button in at 22 I only took 300 share well obviously that's where I'm using half risk so I definitely could have gotten really big there I probably could have gotten about 800 shares Thermograph value, all that stuff doesn't mean anything, so that was just kind of a test to see what it looked like. So I had a big buyer there, somebody did take him out. 
Looks like it wants to come back to view up again for another test, which is definitely fine. Been seeing a lot of big red numbers on the tape here. But obviously, big red numbers doesn't mean anything if we're not going to break levels. So, big buys coming in there. Push it back into the 30s. Then, probably 45. Look at take off some. some. Decent volume on that first bounce. Should be looking to get out some here. Didn't quite get to 50 the high day, which I guess must be what I'm waiting for. So right away, right up there. Finding some trouble. You can see tons of that green there, and that uh, 50 is just not breaking. So I think this is a good call here to just get out in front of that, put the order right back in above. Cause you can just see all of that order fill that is absorbing. And clearly, it's going to be a level of worry as its previous uh, high of day. So nothing wrong here. Came back to it. Still tons and tons and tons. All right, so we finally got the breakthrough um, right away. Seeing more green right after the breakthrough, which is definitely a good sign. Unfortunately, I only got filled 100 shares. You can see the buyers are still stepping up here. Still seeing some huge numbers up there in the mid 60s. But uh, this level is. A resistance spot and it looks like there's another hidden seller up there plus that pivot point I think looking back you can see sellers stacking up there pulling off a little bit so I had I had 17066 as resistance so it's definitely the spot to be looking to get out here. Again, pay attention to that volume. So I got out in front of it. If I remember right, it does go higher though. And for the rest of the day, that was it on the trades. I'm looking at Guild. I remember this one. I just uh, just kept pushing through and never really pulled back, so I never had a trade on it. So Apple did end up pushing a little bit higher there once it finally broke through, but ultimately ended up failing. So I don't think uh, I don't think I messed up anything there. I think that was pretty well handled. So then we got ATVI and Tesla, two solid trades here. SWV up the double tap, and then Tesla was a whole bunch of stuff: consolidation, trap trader, and a previous level. So. So you guys pretty quick there. So right away, nice strong spike at the open, came back to view app, hit once, hit twice, hit three times. So what am I waiting for? Thirty-six holding pretty strong, just got under. People are still buying, bunch of buys there. Alright, so now we got a test underneath, and then we get a real test underneath the previous resistance. 
Looks like 20, there's a hidden buyer here. Starts getting bought back up here. Pretty good, uh, lots of green on the tape there. Right back to V up, or not above it yet. And there's the above, so. I don't know. I might have been a little slow on that one. So let's see. Half speed. Boom, right there. Right here is where I should be clicking the button. Yeah. Ah, that's just a little too fast, I guess. So I just gotta deal with I gotta what I gotta deal with. Big seller got taken out. Still seeing plenty of green here. Good volume too. Always want to see volume bigger than the previous one. So now we're definitely having issues with that 50. So I'm absorbing ton, tons and tons of orders. Bottom back above. Really trying to get over it. Really trying to get over it. So finally get above. Wow, I saw something crazy there. I think I just saw a thousand on the level two there get taken out. So somebody obviously just taken tons and tons of shares here. I mean, look at that. That is unreal. Somebody is just going crazy off of that. And then I guess he, whoever, I think that's what that was, is that was a short there. I think somebody shorted at that 50 level and then immediately covered. Let's see. So there's that 9592 9, there plus 1000 plus 1200 so that's what I was looking at a little too slow here right here. So you'll see so half of it's green here and then the other half's got this down tick. And I'm pretty sure the down ticks means that they're shorts. So what would that mean? Somebody who's trying to short from this 50. I mean, either way, there's some big numbers in there and then immediately pops above him. And I guess that's him hitting out. Either way, I mean, I'm seeing some ridiculous numbers here on the tape. Look at that. What is that? That what is that? It's 130,000 shares. Somebody's trying to sell 130,000 shares. Wow. And then somebody takes it. Look at that. That's huge. Some dude this day was like, "All right, I want to buy a lot of ATVI and if I get the chance, I'm doing it." And there was his chance. I mean, we just get massive order flow after that so that's obviously gonna help the trade it really isn't too significant I just think it's really cool and I want to see it so kind of an, that, this was a mistake here I should not have taken anything off that was just an emotional reaction to seeing what I just saw I guess so that I shouldn't have done just um, obviously previous support uh, or no previous resistance previous support so now I want to see this 50 hold If it holds, adds to the case. If it doesn't hold, obviously doesn't add to the case. But we're holding it now. All 
By the way, if I remember, this trade just uh, immediately worked out. Just went straight to 44. Plenty of green. Plenty of red. All right, so we're just back at that 50 again. That might not be a bad spot to add, because uh, obviously 50's holding, so I mean, and if it's holding off of that much order flow, then uh, I, I mean, it's I guess it's safe to assume that it would only be the same at the other end. So we just tested underneath, got bought back up really quickly there. So it's almost like a trap trader scenario, people looking for that break underneath 50, then once it does break underneath 50, what um what happens next and then buyers immediately bought it back up again so probably not a bad spot to add so took a little more off up here definitely fine strong pushes but still seeing hidden sellers up here so I take a little bit more off then I'm letting the rest ride so I definitely think that was the right call there because I'm still seeing plenty of sellers up there I mean, if it's right at my profit target, then no problems. So flash 44 there, spiking above, took a little bit more off. Make a new high a day. It's very interesting tape reading here. I want to see that again. So it sees like there are uh, hidden buyers here now. So the 13's taking a ton. We start stepping up. There's 13 taking a ton, the 12's taking a ton, the 11's taking a ton, the 10's taking a ton, the 9's taking a ton, and then once the 9 busted under, somebody uh, obviously had to take a bunch of shares to get under him. But we get down to the 0405. Fours. Then we just pop back up above here. Somebody sold 25,000 shares there. But as soon as he sold that 25,000, we just blasted off again, making more push for a high day here. And you still see these giant numbers as this thing is still pushing higher. And start seeing a ton of numbers on the opposite end, all red. But this time, we're still holding it. So what does that mean? So ATV AI just uh, really blasting off here. If I remember right, that was actually a bad call to get out there. Yeah, it was. Because it ended up still pushing even higher. Either way, crazy trade really... Um, interesting things on the tape there I guess um, you know whenever these giant orders are coming in and out of the market what the heck was that whenever these giant orders are coming in and out of the market like that um, it just matters where price is moving or what it's doing so I mean if I'm seeing tons of orders yet we're still rising then I mean I'm, I'm just gonna have to take that as we're gonna keep rising until something obviously changes See the volume still dying out a little bit. I mean, it kind of grew here, but we still ended up pushing even higher until we had about three, and then right about here, I guess, is when the volume really dropped off, and then that's when I wanted to start finally settling off. But uh, just kind of things to take note of next time, where um, you know, just reasons to stay in a trade longer. Some really interesting stuff there. Right, so the next we had Tesla. Tesla making a really nice triangle here. Squeezing above, getting stuck right at VWAP though. So I'm trying to get short here. So definitely, yeah, definitely a solid short here. So we just, uh, big sell off, came underneath VWAP, popped above, failed, stuffed back under, and again we're stuck underneath VWAP. Previous support, becoming resistance, attempted to break above, became resistance again, obviously still resistance here, so 
Let's trade off of it. Let's take a short. Spy was also up like two and a half points, so it does seem to drop a little bit at some point here. So we got kind of like a trap trader situation here. Uh, spike above the range on good volume two. And if it's going to fail, well, then I obviously got a good chance for a short here. A little faster. I remember struggling to get filled. So I go for 10, I get filled at 10 on 200 shares with a risk of. Uh, so I did risk 100 bucks here. 200 in it, 10. And then my risk must have been about 60. So yeah, I guess 200 bucks was about right. Plus it's Tesla, so spread and whatever else. Obviously going to make a difference. Spy clearly helping here. Yeah, this is a slow mover, so it's a slow mover, but it's a big price mover. So Spies come back to view after a little test after its recent breakdown on good volume too, and then all of a sudden the spy failed that break and does that, which is just unbelievable. So I got my stop in. So at this point, I should be thinking warning signs because. Um, well, let's see. So that was on Tuesday, which was 13th. So 13th, that must have been, that must, yeah, this is, so this is right here. So, Spy, super strong at the open pretty much lost all of it bought back up just as strong as it got bought back up at the open uh, again failing dipping buying under getting stuck here at this 84 level man look at that short that's a that's something that I should have caught uh, either way squeeze back underneath and then we get all the way back up here to this 80 level so I mean I should be thinking um, you know just a fake fail breakdown so time to get out of this thing if it's gonna start squeezing on me so I decided to try and get out of break even here because of what the spy is doing but at the same time if Tesla's not gonna be following the spy like the spy is doing here I mean we should obviously be seeing a massive squeeze on Tesla too but we're not seeing it so if the market's gonna be super strong and your stock is not gonna be super strong well then you wanna be short that stock so I mean I'm pretty still in a good spot here. I mean there's nothing there's nothing wrong and then finally we get a little breakdown push here just underneath the range. And obviously we need to see more. And we got really good volume on this, so I definitely know that I'm in a good spot here. Taking a little bit off my profit target, right about that 50, so good spot there. Drops a little more, take a little more. And then we just kind of wait to see what happens, really. Just uh, let the trade work, let it do its thing. Take off more where I need to. Possibly give me a new stop loss. So then at this point, I definitely have a new stop loss. Um, have a nice little breakdown there again. I think I should be take should be taking a, a little bit more off there because now that uh, Tesla's gotten into this spot. Spy had its chance to break down, so now I now at this point you can recognize that the market is actually pretty strong. Uh, whereas at this point here it was undetermined, but I mean I could say from over here, yeah, uh, looks like we want to go higher. And then obviously, if we get above this range, then for sure strong. Tesla, however, just made a new low here. So 
So we gotta wait and see what it does. Taking the offer. Seeing big sellers here at this 18. So it squeezes up above. That was interesting. So it popped up above. So you get this 18 here and this 40. Somebody takes him, squeezes up above a little bit, and then. So we got the 40 there. Somebody takes bunch. He's still there. Still absorbing a bunch. He's not. He's there again. It's like a refresh seller. So once we get above him, uh, start to see a little bit more. But immediately, stuff right back underneath that 40 level, and then we start to head a little lower again. Still really good volume. And I mean, it just comes crashing down really. So I should be taking some. But I'm waiting for the, uh, there it is there. I'm waiting for the offer to get underneath, I think. But it's struggling. So now we're starting to hold the whole number a little bit here. And it pops back up, and I missed my chance for an extra partial there. I think I should have been taking another, a little bit off there. Uh, and now we're under. Then I still got 50, and I mean, just looking fantastic, really. Get another big sell off on the spy there, and Tesla doing the same thing, so that was a super solid trade on Tesla. So I get all out of Tesla where I wasn't even watching Tesla when I got out of it. So Tesla ended up having that little spike there. From the pullback again, previous uh, previous support, previous resistance. I mean, there's probably a chance to add back into this thing at some point. And it looks like the spy. Yeah, once the spy lost it too, that definitely. Yeah, so there were some really solid trades in there that uh, I really could have gotten a piece of on Tesla again and on the spy. I don't know. Either way, just missed it. Ended up getting something good. So the next day we had a Cisco and a spy trade, S and B view app and a trap trader, and then the spy trade was a bunch of triangle trap trader, higher time frame stuff. So let's see what happens. So Cisco, really nice setup here. Super strong open, slow pull back to view app, giving me a nice little range to trade off of. Looking for it to get underneath of this before we do anything, but the 29 held really strong there. Clearly buyers underneath view app. Yes, refresh buyers. Just popping under, showing back up. So we get under there, and then now the question is, how far are we going to go lower? 26. So really not much follow through, and we're already right back to view app again. So we obviously didn't lose it. Gets bought back up, all the way up into 36. I'm way too low, way too late on that. There was, uh, I definitely could have been a lot faster there. So we hit 26, so my stop loss is about 24. I'm thinking 32, 33, yeah, like right about here. And I stepped up, yeah, I should have been a lot quicker on that one. And still, I got filled at 36, so I'm risking, risking about 12 cents. So, I mean, my risk is right on it, but I think the entry could have been better for sure. That's in that one. I was there, but seeing tons of green, tons of big numbers here. And we are moving up, so again, right away, I know that I'm in a good spot to be. Big sellers there at 50, immediately taken out. So clearly, buyers in control. Got the 
60, popping above, taking a little bit off. And then we gotta deal with pullback. Just the way things are. So we got huge pullback here. Um, easily more than I expected. Not great volume on it either. But either way, it gives me a chance to move up my stop. So looks like we're all in these mid-30s. So I do change my stop to just underneath. Nice little pop-up again. So that push clearly failed, so now I'm now it's kinda like a warning sign scenario here. You know, the volume's not as great as it was on the initial push here, and it's not exactly a um a shooting star, but there's somewhat of a decent wick to the upside. Big seller there stepped up. So that was enough for me to get out of that trade. I saw that big seller there, and uh just with what we were seeing, I decided to get it all out here. I think that was actually the wrong call because it ended up doing just that. So yeah, I mean, it just just that one moment I saw it. Now I kind of think about it, going back to the um, Tesla trade that I was in just that past day, where we saw it took that one final test higher before it really got stuffed lower and I think that is exactly what happened here on Cisco we had that big seller so we wanted to have that one test lower before we decided to move higher so I think sticking with uh, levels instead of tape I guess in order for my stop losses worked out a lot better so I'm thinking about uh, Friday too where that was kind of the same case too so just a uh, note to self stick with the levels don't stick with the tape in getting out the spy obviously a nice triangle here tried to go higher tried to go lower first let's try to go lower bought back up above VWAP failed a little bit break out there came back underneath so what am I looking at obviously I spent most of its time above VWAP so it make me think that it's a little stronger than it is weaker So now we got to test higher from that range, and it got stuffed right away. So let's rush that. All right, so here's the test higher. Attempted breakout. Looks like it's getting stuffed. Definitely getting stuffed. Right back into the mid 80s, back into it. So I took 500 shares short with a stop loss. Still above there. So yeah, about 20 cents. So I'm right on it. Tick charts always important, especially when it comes to spy trades. Sellers are showing up on level two. Looks like it tried to get higher, but it failed. There were too many sellers there. It's absorbing it all, so now they're showing up here. Obviously, we gotta lose VWAP. Big sales there. One more 90s test, maybe. So, soft flash 95. Looks like it didn't want it. Back in the mid 80s. Maybe a spot to add. I would definitely move my stop up to just above the whole number. 
No reason to not make it above the whole number. Now we get into the mid 70s. Moving average is definitely helping the bear case. So there's a break. Finally get into the 60s. Previous support. Would not be surprised to see there be support again. And it looks like there is. But same time waiting for that breakout. Trying to see a breakdown here. So we need about 65. So now I gotta start taking this as like a warning sign situation. Because we're getting to the point where this trade's just been taking too long. And uh, that was its chance to break down there. And if anything, it's just a trap trader short. So now I'm I'm one of the trapped guys. Saw so something on the tape there. Somebody taking a ton of shares. Tick charts still somewhat helping but they look like they were consolidated at the high end rather than the low end back in the 70s yeah so that's this this is what I should take as a warning sign right now so it failed to make a new low but same at the other end again gotta, gotta stick with the levels not with the tape Volume was growing here, but it's not growing any direction. It's trying to drop. And again, stuck in another triangle. But we're failing to make new highs, so all in all, still got to hold. So now we're in the 65, so we just broke underneath. Down to the 60s, down to the 50s. And I'm not taking anything off. So obviously got huge volume on this breakdown. So definitely thinking that I'm in a good spot here. But uh, I think I should be taking some off. So I got all the way to the 40s before I took anything. So I took 200 in the 40s. So now it just took a while, but uh, obviously thinking that I'm definitely in a good spot to be. Uh, great break, great volume on the breakdown. Um, got bought back up pretty hard there after it eventually tested underneath that 50, though. So that's definitely a worry, too. Just saw a big seller there on the tape. You know, it's kind of an engulfing candle with the same kind of volume, bringing that thing right back up. So now obviously we've got to hold underneath the 70s in order for this thing to really convinced me it wants to go lower and it looks like pretty good so far back in the 50s and this, this is the point that it should be losing it should absolutely be dropping lower I'm seeing tons of sellers on the, the offer but uh, they're getting taken out so people are buying down here now so now now is definitely a time that I need to start being worried. I think I should move my stop up. <laughs> Plenty of sellers, but we're not dropping lower, and that's the problem. So right there, I think, is where I probably should have been looking to get out and rethink the trade take my money instead of letting it go here. I mean, yeah, it obviously might want to come to view after the upper trend line. It might want to reset here, but we should be holding underneath that 70. And after the first time, we really should have been seeing some kind of breakdown here. So I don't think I would have had a problem getting out of that trade first above that 70. 
Just take it for a super small win to start and look to add back in later. So it looks like I'm sticking with 80 for the new stop here. Look at that volume. That volume is just. That's telling me the trade's definitely over. I mean, it's, this was the VWAP test. This is the spot that it should be turning around from if it's going to turn around. So Tick made a new low. Didn't fail to make any new highs, though. Or if it did fail to make new highs, I don't know. Maybe I go back to it. Yeah, it looks like it's just super squeezing up. Yeah, so all in all, maybe could have saved a little bit of money there. All right, now for the day that really matters, so Friday. Friday we got EA to start on that gap and go hidden seller thing. I don't know, kind of a messy morning really. I took like three trades in the first 10 minutes of the day, I think. And yeah, it was one of the weird ones, so gets it to the 108.50. Tell that it's just kind of a problem in pre-market. So we get there, all of a sudden there's a hidden seller here. And I'm thinking about it for a gap and go, but because we got a hidden seller there too, I decided to go for it. Immediately get filled through in its shares, pops up to the 70, 75, and the 75 there's a hidden seller there. So as soon as it turns back down, get out, uh, save myself a really bunch of money there. Uh, easily save myself a $100 loss just by, by how fast I was. Log am starting to act a little funny. So I made a couple mistakes on this one here. So obviously there was a hidden seller here about, I think it was like 37 or something. And I'm trying to get filled 200 shares. The uh, problem is the spread got ridiculous and um, it's just a high flying stock. So I mean, it pops up above and then we get down to this 82 and I head out of this thing because there's a hidden buyer here and uh, it was just taking tons of orders and I was Pretty pretty cautious because we just popped made a new high a day here, it's down 15%. I mean, if it's gonna drop, it's gonna it could seriously drop. So I wasn't taking that chance. So I just took the loss on it. And now at the other end of things here, I mean, it's a great looking opening range breakout play. Plus we got a hidden buyer here at this 82. So I'm thinking to myself, okay, if we uh, keep holding this 82 I can just get long in front of this guy just kind of like a re-entry here off the opening range play stop just underneath him super tight risk reward I mean have a great shot obviously for some upside momentum here gets down to 82 again still holding a little bit Just not seeing much on the tape. Uh, buyers don't really seem like this is this is like the last chance here for this thing to really start taking off and uh, moving away from 82, because we just keep coming back to it. I mean, the more and more we keep coming back to it, the more times you know better chance of breaking. And I got really lucky too on this one because it ended up breaking right underneath my stop limit order. Just lucky enough that it came back to where my limit was and it filled me there. So really lucky on that one. I mean. The trades are there, the opportunities are there, it's just, they just didn't work. I mean, I don't really know much what, what uh, much else there is to say about it, it's just a couple of trades that didn't work. Uh, gave myself a re-entry on it, just an unusual buyer-seller trade. So right off the bat, I knew I was down like 200 bucks on the day, so I needed to find something else. Yeah, login was a pretty good short here too. I just it only it only gave me I mean I guess that's one and that's two. I don't really know why I didn't take it. So there's one, there's a view app test there. I think I might have been waiting for some kind of better entry because whenever the spread gets as ugly like this and it's a circuit breaker, you know, you just gotta deal with the market orders. I mean a thirty cent spread and I'm trying to get, you know, at least thirty cents of risk. Just a not ideal risk reward. So then we get the test higher. I mean, look at that. 
from that high to where it is now. It's 40 cents. Yeah, you know, it's just... Now it's back up in the 90s, and then immediately, you know, there's 60 cents. I mean, it's just... There's no time. There's no... It's a really difficult trade to judge. So Tesla's pretty nice there. So log me in. Uh, previous resistance becoming support and it's setting up for like a decent little range here so now I'm waiting for a breakdown from the range to see it get bought back up so it gets as low as 30 here and I'm waiting for buyers to come in get a little bit there pops into the 50s and the 60s so again I mean it's just kinda what I gotta deal with I mean I got 300 shares long at 62 stop was 29 so a little bit more than what I think would be ideal, but right away, just immediately, straight shot right to new high day. Uh, I take off half up there. Great volume, so now I'm in a good spot to be. Waiting for another push here. Just waiting for some level to hold. So it made a new high day, but the uh, the bid didn't catch up. And I wanted to get some above rather than, you know, deal with the spread. So I wanted to wait a little bit. So now we got this 83 level starting to hold here. Spy's dropping, but login doesn't seem to care. So now at this point we've got a little bit of an issue. So had a really nice initial move here. Came back, didn't make a new low, made a new high here. Only barely. Volume seems to be dipping off here. So if we're following the pattern of what happened previously, we get this little pullback, big explosion. Pull back, decent explosion. Pull back, not seeing any explosion here. So obviously 83 is holding, so I got a new stop just underneath of it. And it looks like I'm thinking about adding here. But obviously would always rather see the market on my side than moving against me. So now we pop above out of this range here. And this is the point where we should be seeing some kind of explosion. But we're not. So I get all out. And that was enough for me. I, I, I don't think that's a bad call at all. I think that was absolutely fine there. So uh, where was it? Log M. So... So there's the explosion, so it just looks like uh, I needed to be a little more patient. I mean, you know, it's just another case. Um, stop loss is the levels. It's not, you know, warning, warning signs are only for trades that haven't been working well. And log M was working well. So I'm going to write that down. So warning signs are for trades that haven't been working well. Um, if it has, stick to stop loss levels that the market gives you. I mean, obviously, I would have caught that move if I stuck with the level. I mean, it only just ticked underneath that 83 before it huge spike up there. So what else? Alright, so XPO. XPO was pretty interesting. Uh, huge sell off right at the open. Failed to move any lower. Really nice buyback here, sticking above VWAP. Um, volume's alright. I mean, it's consistent. That's the main thing here. So then we get this little pullback back to VWAP. Bouncing off of a whole number really nicely here. Big squeeze up. So at this point, I'm like, alright, so what do we got here? 
So it uh, gets back down to that 49 here, and I'm thinking, okay, this is a great situation for a stock that moves a ton. Uh, really tight risk reward here. Clear stop loss level underneath the whole number. And as long as that guy's there, then uh, we're looking pretty good here. But uh, the main thing to notice here is the spy. So it's sitting up at two. Uh, I just saw a flash at 236 there. So it's about 220 up. And um, that okay. Well, I guess it happened before I got into the trade. So maybe I should have avoided this one because of what the spy was doing. So let's see. We had this huge run up here on XPO from about 10:30. So from about 10:30, the spy was just stuck in a range. So the spy initially popped up, uh, failed to break lower, failed to make a new high here, and then it just tanked and gave up. So if the market was attempting to hold higher and it finally gave in well a stock that's down almost 20 percent on the day does it really have that strong of a chance to recover more if the market's gonna give up its range as well I mean obviously not so it ended up just being a super quick loss I mean it was a great looking trade but just the uh, the context of things really gave up on it so it ended up squeezing higher but not before dropping a bunch and then at that point the trade just it wasn't the same so I mean there was there wasn't anything left for me to take or get back in on so what am I looking at so I'm looking at Facebook here uh, this is from the uh, pre-market high and uh, high day which was also the open so so the spy just gave up all that getting back underneath and it looks like it's holding on the view up really nicely here so I'm looking for shorts obviously and Facebook was underneath huge daily spot from where that huge gap was and I mean Facebook looks like it has multiple points of downside possibility to it so Facebook itself popped up above made that trend line spot failed super hard back underneath you can see previous uh, support here now we're starting to hold underneath it so I'm looking for some kind of trap trader uh, range breakout test here before I decide to get anything short I mean it works out really nicely so we are we're squeezing above we get up to that 50 so then I'm just watching it at this point I'm thinking okay well now we just want to see the sellers come in I want to see this failed breakout higher boom immediately see it take five right and share short I could have gotten bigger on this uh, my stop loss is at should be the high of this but I only saw 51 and I guess that did get above so 53 so I mean I, I might be able to get like 600 shares either way uh, good looking trade I mean it's just it's moments it's just it's amazing how fast in trading your mind has to be able to switch biases like immediately so I mean from the second I took this trade looks phenomenal right I mean we got markets looking weak just broke down holding underneath the app we just got this failed test higher looks like an amazing trade but obviously the spy is going to change its uh, sentiment here and start moving higher can't fight it you gotta trade what you see can't trade what you think can't trade what you feel gotta respect what's in front of you so Facebook getting down towards the low of this range here a little faster the spy is trying to hold above now it looks like Seems to be failing here a little bit, but Facebook got bought back up, back at the lower end of the range. So I got down to 21. So I'm looking for a breakdown of 20 here. So the spy is failing, and obviously uh, that's what it's waiting for. So we get that little breakdown. Took off 100 shares just underneath it. Looking for some more continuation, obviously, but uh, that's this. This isn't a good sign. I mean, we're it's Facebook. The um, the sentiment is very bearish. Um, same with the market. I mean, we should be seeing follow through on this candle here. And if we're not seeing follow through, then we got a problem. And I'm not really seeing any. Yeah, I'm not seeing any reason that it shouldn't be breaking from this level. So the spy's moving up here a little bit. So we're back into the 40s on Facebook. the spy same situation here spy um, just failing just a failing breakdown I mean I've been saying it to myself for the past God knows how long few weeks now any short I mean it's just the buyers have been in complete control and I mean there's just there's no reason to fight the short side fight for the short side anymore 
every time I just keep disappointing myself with no matter how good a short setup looks, it's just the market. I mean, the buyer, the bulls are just, they just win. They just do. Anytime you see that failed breakdown, it's just, it's no wonder anymore. I mean, every, everything is being a failed breakdown almost. So at this point, I gotta be thinking warning signs. I mean, no matter how good the thing looks for a short here, I mean, I just, there's no, you know, I keep telling myself, stick to the levels. Well, this is a trade that I'm talking about that, what I just write, warning signs are for trades that haven't been working well. This trade hasn't been working well. Should be, I should be doing right what I'm doing right there, but I never clicked the button. So I stuck with uh, 55. And you know, well, failed short. Obviously, gonna squeeze higher. No doubt about it. Should have saved myself some money there. I took a took a small loss on it. Should have been should have been probably break even trade. So then what else we got? Log in was pretty unfortunate. I think I thought this one looked really good for some kind of move. I got that. I got that failed breakdown uh, right off that 83 level. I don't oh man, why didn't? Log in. I don't want to see that. I want to see the whole chart. Ah, come on, I don't go to it. So then we got to go here. So that was on Friday. Just this day here, yeah. Doesn't look like it did anything. Just kind of lost that 83. It's held really nicely here. I mean, maybe the, maybe there's a decent short there, but ultimately, I mean, that looked that just looks so good for a long. Ugh. That was annoying. Can't force myself. So anyway, Tesla trade. Tesla was a really solid one. I like this Tesla one a lot. So same scenario as the other Tesla trade, just looking for a, so Tesla really strong, uh, held above you up the entire day, just started getting underneath, you can see SPY's at the low end of that too, so it still looks like the SPY's kind of sitting underneath of it. Uh, obviously previous support, becoming resistance, looking for this uh, trap trader trade here, looking for exactly what we're seeing here, so looking for a spike into maybe the 40s, 50s, so it looks like it got into guess the 50s there and then just looking for it to fail try and get a limit and I end up having to chase it a little bit so I filled a hundred It's so interesting trading these trades that they're uh, so much slower because you really appreciate tape reading a lot more whenever it's this slow because you can just, I don't know, you can just read it clearly. It's not screaming super fast. You know, things just seem to make more sense whenever you read the tape, whenever it's a lot slower like this. So I got pretty lucky here. Uh, got filled, had, you know, pretty much exactly what I expect to see. I mean, it's Tesla, so it also, you know, at the same time, you know, I can talk about how much I like reading the tape whenever it's slow. I just have to deal with the trade taking longer to work, and that is just the way it is. If only four people are trading Tesla, trading 500 shares a minute, then it's just going to take a while. So Tesla kind of had like a, what's the word, like a leading indication of the spy there, which is kind of weird. So you got this big drop off on the sp uh, on a Tesla there, and. Spy starts selling off a little bit too. So, looking that this uh, this is this isn't a trade that I would expect to run and work for for however long because uh, trading view it's just not the same. My uh, trading view just doesn't show moving averages and support the same as Lightspeed does. So there was just, there's tons of support right here at this 306 level. So I was expecting. This is this is all that I should be expecting from this trade. Yeah, clear clear support here. I mean, this is a level that's been holding plus the 200 coming up on it, and I don't know if I was going back over at the time, but 
higher time frame moving averages are still underneath of this thing too. Either way, it's a really good start to the trade. Take a little bit more off. I I don't I don't doubt myself at all for that one. Either way, I'm still holding. Just waiting and seeing. The spy's still losing it here. Yeah, big squeeze there. Big squeeze on the spike, big squeeze on Tesla. Really good volume too, so it just you know, you just gotta take it as a warning sign. You just have to. I mean it's at a level that it should be finding support at, and no surprise, it's finding support here. Price action's confirming it. I mean, we need to be losing this level right now if we are going to be moving lower. If not, stop needs to be in just above it. I think that's what I do here. Yeah, I end up getting all out just the way it is. I think I gave myself a uh, warning sign thing though because I had a chance to get out of this thing a little earlier than obviously taking the full stop but I ended up taking the full stop so could have cut it, should have cut it maybe I don't know I, I think I would have been happy with myself either way because the warning signs there just take it off get rid of it I mean if you really want to get back in on it sure go for it but at the same time warning signs are there so XPO making a nice triangle failed breakdown looking for the break up higher got my order in above I I don't know I, I think I blew it on this one really so it was really late in the day I was down with like a hundred bucks or something and uh, took more trades this day than I have in the entire week. So don't think I was thinking that clearly. I told myself before I took this trade I should just wait for the breakout and enter in back on pullbacks. But instead, fear of missing out came in. You know, we got the failed breakout lower. Decided I thought, you know, there might be a really big squeeze here. I'll just go for the long. Then, um... Just right away, I, I didn't even put my stop loss in correctly, really. I mean, I, I just assumed that this 49 was going to be another spot that would be holding higher. And I didn't. I mean, there was just, there was nothing there. Go right to it. And boom, just uh, nothing. Ended up stopping me out right away. I mean, it wasn't even a clear spot to get out. I mean, clear spot's down here. But uh, I don't want to take 200 shares. I want to, I want to take 400 shares on a stock that's got a potential to squeeze, you know, 60 cents, and then, you know, right away I got like a $200 winner. Well, that doesn't mean anything. So I pay the price for it. I mean, that's just what I get. Trade ended up being amazing. I just because I traded it so poorly the first time, there was no chance for me to get back into it. So where was that? That was right here here, here, where I took it in on this thing. So there's me getting in, and then there's me stopping out. Still pops above to the high end of this range, though this time it gets above to that 28. Fails to make a new low here, pops to uh, 95, and this one was at 94. Boom, explosion, big squeeze. Again, right back to it. Holds higher this time, and the thing just turned it up higher. I mean, if I was paying attention to it, you know, I mean, it's... A super clear win just all in this I just uh, wasn't there for it so just the way it goes I mean I really kind of I mean it's no it's no wonder I gave back some on this day here so so let's see what mistakes that I make uh, warning signs for sure uh, fear of missing out warning signs to get out early warning signs to cut my losses a little sooner um, just didn't work uh, did work, but didn't re-enter and didn't respect the stop loss level. So, warning signs are for trades that haven't been working well. Stick to the stop loss levels. Tesla started working well, but I mean it can only work well for one or two pushes. I mean, login worked for one or two pushes and then started giving me the signs. I mean, the difference between this trade and the uh, Tesla trade 
is that I'm on the same side as the market here. Same side as the market, and uh, we're just we we just are holding higher. Whereas Tesla is holding support where it should be holding support from, and uh, we just see the volume going with it. I mean, if it if this Tesla trade was as amazing as it would have been, this level right here would have held. But got above it, squeezed above it, volume confirmed. Facebook just didn't work that well from the beginning, so I mean, the signs were there absolutely, and then the first day trades just, they just didn't, and I mean, that's just the way it is sometimes. So I mean, either way, feeling good about coming back, I want to increase my risk, and there's a few reasons for this. One is because I feel like I'm seeing things well, um, the money is starting to come in a little bit, I fully acknowledge that it's going to be me that is going to be the only issue in my trading. Me increasing my size has nothing to do with any trade that I take ever from any point, no matter what, for whatever reason. And if I firmly believe that, and I firmly believe that I can act on that, then there's no reason that I shouldn't be trading really as big as I can. Because if I want to do this for a living, I have to trade like I want to do this for a living. And that's just step one, is to just get bigger. So I'm debating if I want to go, I mean, right now I'm risking like $100 every single trade. I'm debating if I want to go for 150 or if I just want to go all out here and start doing $200 of risk every single trade here and just see how it feels. And I think that's the big thing. I read that some dude on Twitter said something see if I can find it. I feel like I'm, his name is on the tip of my tongue here. It might be Credelli. When people ask how I traded bigger, I say I tested myself. How did I handle a 50 lot or a 100 lot or more? You don't know how you'll handle it until you test yourself. I did these tests when I was up money and tried to scratch them. I had to see what it felt like to have a big trade on. That's going to be me next week. That's what I'm doing. I'm going to test myself. We're just going to see how it goes. And that's really all there is to it. There's there's nothing, you know, there's no big deal about it. You know, nobody cares. No trade doesn't care. Market doesn't care. It's just me putting my own emphasis on it, making it seem like it actually matters. And it doesn't. So that is that. That is my weekly review. I'm going to type up a little report right now. And you can read it if you want to. If not, then expect me to be back on Tuesday. Thanks for watching.